it were the apocalypse, would I be able to survive off the land? I am challenging myself to eat solely out of the garden for an entire week. Let's see what happens. Look away. There's a little. Mommy. Mommy. Sometimes I look at stuff that's a little uh, apocalyptic. No. Okay, it's just a thing. I don't know why. I don't know why. But uh, I was talking to my mom and I was like, hey, if the apocalypse happens, you know, zombies, whatever, you can come to our house and we'll be fine because, you know, I got the garden. Then when I did the video on producing all of your food needs. We're gonna starve, aren't we? Probably. I realized how little we actually produce. So I thought a good test to really drive it home in my brain and give me a better scope for how much food I need to be planting um, would be to actually test it out, do a test run. So for one week, I wanna eat entirely out of the garden. Now when I say eating entirely out of the garden, I do wanna throw in a few staples, okay? I'm gonna allow myself flour, and sugar and salt and so that nobody in my family gets hurt coffee 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 okay i don't produce coffee but i, I think if i'm going to be eating only radishes for a week i need some coffee to go with that so an alternative title for this might be can you survive on radishes for one whole week I do wanna say, I am not a nutritionist. This is not a food plan that you should be following by any stretch of the imagination. This is just me uh, recalibrating and figuring out exactly what it is that I would need to do to not starve to death. Okay, so I'm starting the eat out of your garden week tomorrow and I just decided this like right now. So I'm kind of freaking out a little bit because I am not prepared but I feel like that's part of it because if the apocalypse happened, it's not like you can be like, whoa, 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 back up apocalypse. I need some weeks to prepare. By the way, if the apocalypse does happen, you should have already some stored food so that you are not doing what I'm about to do. Nope, that's mine. What I'm thinking is that I can do this once per quarter. This is springtime, I'll do it again in the summertime, the fall, the winter. And my hypothesis is that each season I should get better. I think that here in the spring I'm probably going to be pretty hungry. It's hard as a rock. I think it's not going to go very well. I want snacky food. But hopefully in the summer I think I'll be a lot better off. I think by doing this I'll probably get a better idea of what kind of food needs I actually have. I think it'll put me more in touch with the garden. I think it will force me to do better succession planting and to think ahead because if I'm thinking, oh, I have to go an entire week in the winter only eating off of what we produce, I'm gonna be sure to put up more food. For example, I have some radishes right now. This is one of the- And I'm probably gonna need to eat them for this week, but I also wanted to try fermenting some of them for later. So I think it's going to be a constant weighing of my needs right now versus my needs in the future. So on some level, I'm excited about it, but on a practical level, I'm like, I am not going to enjoy this. What if I just eat all bread, just bread straight way through, just flour. Okay, now just to see what happens, we're also going to weigh myself before and after. Hopefully it's not too much of a change. Meal number one, if you don't consider coffee a meal, which sometimes I do. Warning, my food is not going to look very good. And also I am still making food for my family. So it's left over from their breakfast. So. All right, so now I'm gonna make some sauerkraut. This is store-bought, so I won't be eating this this week, but definitely after that.
First, I like to save some of the outside leaves because I'm gonna use that to weigh down the rest of the stuff. You know, the inside of a cabbage is supposed to look like a lady with like her arms raised. Mine looks more like, I don't know, lobsters? Look like lobsters with their arms raised. Is that right? I don't know, but I like to kind of switch it up with this. Here's my jar. And keep. Okay, we've been doing this for like half a second. Already I can check in and say that I want, I want some chocolate. <laughs> I want chocolate. All right, let's go get some lunch and do a salad. <laughs> Obviously. I'm just kind of picking the outside leaves off. I'm not picking the whole, cutting off the whole bunch of lettuce. So I want it to get bigger. I'm gonna do the same thing with those cabbages. These look so good. I'm so excited about these cabbages, guys, because I've never grown cabbages before. I did start a bunch more too. I'll take the ones that are kind of been snacked on by the caterpillar right there. So we're gonna take him off. Grab some garlic scapes. So I have other radishes, so we're gonna pull some of these pods and put them in the salad. And oh my gosh, look at what I just found. Oh, oh. oh. that's a good one. Very might have to give that to one of my kids. Okay, well this isn't nothing. I can confidently say this is not gonna be enough. I guess this is what we're going with right now. I'll probably eat, pick a lot of stuff for dinner, I guess. I hope. Uh, all right, so I made a salad out of lettuce, cabbage, some radish pods, uh, egg, salad dressing out of sauteed garlic scapes, <laughs> water, and we're gonna see how this tastes. Well, my family's eating dinner. I'm a little bit jealous it smells good but that's okay because we're gonna come out and i think we're gonna try to forage i don't know what we're gonna do we're gonna figure it out also i was just gonna mention that i i don't have a problem with eating only vegetables that's not the problem the problem is that i don't have very many grown to eat that is the problem you guys look all really happy so garlic mustard is wild uh, it grows usually around like trees, kind of by uh, forests. It is invasive, so we're gonna eat it up. Is that creepy going? That's kind of weird. This is garlic mustard, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull some. You know, when I was pulling them earlier this year, they weren't like trees. Okay, so there's also some, I call them wild strawberries. I know people call them mock strawberries. So yeah, this looks just like your regular strawberry plant with a little berry. Not at all as sweet as strawberries that you grow yourself, but not bad. Here's one of the mulberry bushes. Got a handful. They're ripe. You know they're ripe when they just fall off in your hand. I'm gonna supplement with some garden stuff. I kinda wanna do some like roasted radishes, but I'm not turning on the oven just for that, so. Y'all know greens just like cook down to next to nothing, so I'm gonna pile them on. I got my dough for bread started, so tomorrow I can bake some bread. All right. Here is dinner. We have garlic mustard, um, some sort of kale or cabbage or something, some radishes, some radish pods, some mock strawberries, some uh, mulberries, and some bread. Okay, so dinner was a little bitter. It was a little bitter. Uh, and some of those mulberries were a little bitter, so it was a bitter dinner, but, but we, it was good still. I would add more berries next time. Day two of the eat out of your garden challenge. Man, my, I got some allergies going on today. We had storms roll through and we went from 90 degrees to 50 degrees like that. Um, so it's really cold outside. I'm gonna attempt to make some bagels. I don't have no idea how this is gonna turn out. Made some dough last night. Got my water bath going. Well, that isn't the ugliest bagel I've ever seen. Oh my goodness. Mm, they look so appetizing. Look away. Look away. I don't even want to show you my face. Why am I wearing snow boots? I don't know. Oh goodness. If we can do something kind of like a soup, maybe. It does, it's gonna be rough. Okay, I think that's up. We're gonna go with kale and then I'm gonna use some butternut squash from last year. I don't think that's cheating because I technically grew it. Have you ever heard the story of stone soup? It's like these people go to the village and they ask for food and nobody will give them any food. 
So they set up a pot in the middle of the town square and they say, oh, that's okay, we'll make you food. We'll make stone soup, it's delicious. And everyone's like, stone soup, what's that? And they're like, oh, you'll see. So they put a stone in a pot and add water and then they, they're doing it and they're like, oh, it's so good, it's the best soup you've ever had. You know what makes it taste even better though is if we had some potatoes. And someone was like, oh, I have some potatoes and they run and get them and put them in the bowl. And then they're like, oh, well, this is gonna be the best stone soup ever, I can tell. Oh, but you know what would make it even better is if we had some corn someone says, well, I have some corn. And they run and get the corn and put it in. And they keep doing that until they make, you know, stone soup. So I feel like tonight's dinner is like stone soup, except for nobody's bringing me any, any food. I just have, like, the stone. All right, here we go. Got butternut squash from last year, kale from this year, a garlic scape, some garlic, some thyme and an ugly bagel. Okay, so I had a little bit of inspiration yesterday for today. So we're gonna go down the basement and get another butternut squash. Kinda scary. This is all that's left of last year's harvest. Thank you for taking it, be careful. We're just gonna stab this with a fork, stick it in the oven at like 400 degrees for, I don't know, half an hour, hour, I don't know. All right, so I do get asked sometimes, uh, do they explode? I have not had one explode yet. I think poking it with a fork helps. Okay, so breakfast today was just coffee. It, I had an idea, but after I made food for everyone else, I just wanted to get out in the garden and start working. So coffee, but now I'm gonna go ahead and get some lettuce for lunch and um, do something with that. This, I got a hard boiled egg too. Check on my ferments. You have to remember to burp the, uh, the top so they don't explode, which means like opening up a little bit. Uh, usually take about a week for me, so not ready to eat yet. I wish, I wish this one was though. What? Why are you making a sandwich out of disgusting stuff? Why am I making a sandwich out of disgusting stuff? All right, lunch today is lettuce, eggs, and radishes on the ugly bagels I made. Just realized that I'm really hungry, so I am actually going to cut this and eat half of it now. So you do it in the oven like that, it's great, so you just scoop it out, it's super easy. So this is like a snack, I guess. Oh, yummy. There's the bubbly. We're going to make some more dough. To be honest, I kind of wanted to quit this challenge today until I found out that it was Monday and not Sunday. So I thought I had more days left than I do. I only have to make it to Thursday. So I feel like I can do this. So I'm back on track. I'm going to try to make like a pancake type thing with eggs, sweet potato, flour. I'm going to put some garlic scapes in it. I'm going ahead and giving myself some oil, okay? Because, because I feel like it. Escapes. All right, here's the other half of that sweet potato that I ate yesterday. So, okay, I've added the sweet potato to the eggs. Now I'm gonna put some flour in. All right, moment of truth. Let's put it in the pan and see what happens. I do realize that this is like the world's worst cooking show. Like, like the food is not very good and it, it's just not, it's not good. Oh my, guys. Ah. Okay, I flipped it. I do not have high hopes for this. There it is. Ta-da! I'm pretty hungry. I'm kind of done with this challenge. I feel like I've learned everything I need to know already. There's one of my ugly bagels in the oven, and I got so excited, but it's hard as a rock. Luckily, I had the forethought to actually make some dough last night. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, oh, my bread. I love you, bread. What? No. Oh. All right, so these are the radishes that we started fermenting, and actually I just tried one, and it was actually pretty good. So I'm gonna take some of these and put them on my breakfast. All right, so we got fresh baked bread, scrambled eggs with silly onions, and keeping with our theme of the week, radishes, fermented radishes. Day 600,083,000 of the Eat Out of Your Garden Challenge. This is me now, wearing pajama pants. Just not thrilled, because I want snacky food. I want snacky food. I can't eat any snacky food. My snacky food today was fermented radishes. It's not snacky food. Fermented radishes. They were good though. They were good. Kind of tired today. Look great. I'm wearing pajamas and flip flops with socks because that is that is good. I'm just gonna pick a bunch of greens for dinner and 
figure it out. I'm just like sauteing greens and garlic. Hooray for the garlic, but I don't even know. I'm just gonna like eat it with radishes, of course, and um, bread. Dinner is served. Sauteed greens with some garlic, fermented radish, and some bread. One of the things that's abundantly clear is that I need a lot more quickly accessible foods. Hopefully that'll come through the fermenting, the canning, maybe I can can up some soups or something. I usually cook from scratch, but when I'm tired, like, I don't feel like thinking a whole lot about what I'm eating, I guess. It's very uninspiring. I only feel like I only have like three ingredients and Maybe there's a lot more and someone else would do a lot better than me. But for right now, I'm just feeling really uninspired, kind of tired, and um, not loving this challenge right now. Mommy, 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 mommy. Is that pizza? Well, I made it five days. I mean, I thought it was gonna be hard, but I don't think I thought it was going to be that hard. I think the more tired and hungry I got, the less food I was able to make. The more tired and hungry I got, it just kind of snowballed. It was not good. Definitely, if it was the apocalypse, I would be in trouble. I do not think I could feed my entire family off of what we have here. This was a very eye-opening experience. My biggest takeaways are that I need to grow a lot more food. I was surprised that I didn't use the sugar at all. I would much rather have oil than sugar. And now that I'm on the other side of this challenge, now I have ideas for what I could have made. And although I was hungry and tired, I wasn't in any danger. It was only five days. And because I know someone will ask, final weight? If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any good recipes for radishes, Please leave them in the comments. No. <laughs>